That's me using Siri to control my Nest speakers with an iPhone or an iPad. And with today's video, you'll be able to create all kinds of automation that bridges the very wide gap between Google and Apple's smart home systems and their voice assistants. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and this isn't the easiest bridge to cross, but with so many of us using both Google and Apple products in our homes, it's going to be worth it to learn how to do this. On your iOS device, you need to make sure you have five things. The Google Assistant application installed, and if you want to be able to control lots of your home, the Google Home app installed as well. I'm thinking that most of you here will have both of those things. Through this method, we'll be able to control anything using Siri on our phones or iPads that sits in the Google Home application or is something we can do with the Google Assistant in general. You also need the Shortcuts application installed. If you can't find this on your device, search for it in the App Store, but I found an even more effective way of searching just directly on my iOS device for Shortcuts, and that has given me a quick link to the app to download, or in my case, open. Your iOS device needs to be updated as, as far as it can be, and you'll need to give Siri and Shortcuts access to learn from the Google Assistant application. You can start doing that by entering into the Google Assistant app. If you've never added the Google Assistant app to Siri before, you may have to do that in the Explore tab. Tap down bottom left on this icon and make sure that it's added. If you're not getting that prompt and are unsure, check in the settings in your iOS device and make sure that Siri and Shortcuts has access to the Assistant app. You'll scroll down in the settings and find Assistant and make sure this toggle here is turned on. The basics are set up, so let's head back into the Google Assistant app. Go ahead and say anything that you normally would say to the Google Assistant. In this case, let's control a smart bulb in our home called Gym One. This is a Bluetooth connected bulb that only connects to Google Home speakers and is only controllable through the Google Assistant. At least that's how it is today. What I'm trying to say here is that you can control anything that's in your Google Home app with Siri no matter what. So let's turn on the Gym One bulb and turn it off using the Google Assistant. I can also turn this bulb on as part of a group in my gym room as it's called. Doing this in the Google Assistant app has added some commands into the Shortcuts app because of those permissions we set. So as I move over to the Shortcuts app, you're going to see some suggested actions over on the right hand side on a tablet or on a phone, you have to scroll up like this. Whatever command you gave may or may not show up here, and that's okay because I'm going to give you a workaround if it didn't. But it's always good to test out your Google commands before you go doing all this other work in shortcuts. If you go into the list of apps and find the Google Assistant, there will be an option to ask Google. Tap on that to put it in as an action on your shortcut and now you'll have a text field that you can fill in. It looks like it needs to be a question, but it doesn't as you can add in any command that you would like into this box. This means we can enter in commands like turn on gym one or turn off gym one, or we can say turn off all the lights in the gym. Now save the shortcut and tap on it in the main page and you should have the Google Assistant app open up and and then the command you gave being pushed into the app, which in turn executes the command. This is all well and good, but we could take this much further, and I think you're gonna be pretty impressed by what you can do with Siri in just a few moments. Of course, most of us don't want to open up the Shortcuts app to run this, and Shortcuts includes a direct connection to Siri. You'll notice that within the icon of your shortcut, the command you can say to Siri is towards the bottom. Usually that command is far too long to remember and far too annoying, so in Instead, let's adjust the name of the shortcut like this. Now, I have a command that says gym lights on and I can use that with Siri.
One of the good things about the Google Assistant is that it has the ability to toggle most of the lighting and lots of the products in your smart home. So you can test this out and see if you can get one command to turn on and off your lights using Siri. Now, if I change what I'm quote unquote asking the Google Assistant in my shortcuts to toggle the lights in the gym and I change my name of the shortcut to gym lighting, then I can have one command with Siri to run the lighting in my Google Home app and in my gym. It's an extremely easy one to remember and it does a pretty complex thing. Gym lighting. Speaking of complex things, I started the video showing the command I'm ready for music and that will normally just start music on one speaker, but I showed you it starting on a couple of speakers. It also played a very specific kind of music and I got to choose the music service as well. It also changed the volume on a few speakers before starting music, so it was doing quite a bit. This is the kind of automation we want from a single command or a button press, right? It might be one command for us to control from this point on, but obviously there's a lot more going on. And this is where Google Assistant routines can combine with shortcuts and Siri and be so powerful. If I head into the Google Assistant application and I go up to the top right and go into routines, my whole list of routines will come up and here I've created one called I'm ready for music. Within this routine, I've added a number of actions. Those actions are exactly what you saw with rock music being played on Spotify on multiple speakers, plus the volume was set for a few speakers. The first few actions you would add are the type where you try adding your own. This gives you access to state anything you'd like to change the volume to, but I will tell you that there's a problem between Sonos and Google right now that may result in this command maybe not working, but for me today it works in this exact format. The last command is to play music, and you can tap back into that in order to edit what it is you want to have happen. My command has play rock music, or it could be a playlist that I have on the service, and then I state the service on Spotify. And finally, I state what I would like to play on, which in this case is multiple speakers, and that's called my display group. The starter for this routine is just that statement, I'm ready for music, which is the command words that you'd use with the Google Assistant to start all of these actions. Following our exact same process with Siri shortcuts that we did before, we can create a shortcut that executes this routine by pushing that statement into the Ask Google action. Then, as long as we modify the name, we can say exactly the same thing to Siri and have it work like this. I'm ready for music. This is great and it's almost as far as we can go with controlling all of our Google Home devices because in that routine you can add in a number of actions like controlling your smart devices at the same time to kind of set the mood or to lock down your home at that point because you don't want anyone to hear that you listen to Nickelback. And it's totally okay that I made that joke because I'm Canadian. But there's a feature in Shortcuts that allows us to run a number of routines with the Google Assistant. Here I'm creating a shortcut that runs the I'm ready for music routine, but then I'm also running a routine called I'm enjoying music, which sets the home up for that experience. That routine changes my home's lighting to what I want when I'm truly ready for music. If I run it this way, what will happen is the two commands will essentially override each other and we're likely to only get one thing to execute. In fact, with a Google Assistant routine, we may not get anything to execute because it takes a long time for Google to recognize that specialized command and then convert it into action. Instead of having nothing work, what we're going to do is add a wait command. And I would say that if you're 
piecing together two routines that you at least give it a 10 second wait in between the two to run. Depending on results, either extend or lessen the time until it works reliably. You can see how many seconds I had to add in in order to have these two run, but with Siri shortcuts, this is actually really effective and it's allowing me to piece a lot of things together. Of course, you could add in other apps to really create amazing home automations with Siri, but at this point, you should have a lot of things you can do with Google Assistant and Siri working together to control your smart home. But the Google Assistant is much more powerful than just giving you access to the Google Home application. In fact, in a lot of cases, it's a better voice assistant than Siri will be. And you probably don't know a lot of the hidden tips and tricks that you can do with that Google Assistant to get so much more done in your life. I've created a series of videos that will give you those tips and tricks and help you with things like Google Assistant routines to do much more than I showed you here today. So check that out now because it's up on screen. Otherwise, thanks for watching today and of course, don't hate, automate.